they can't, if they're crying hardship now, where are they living? Exactly. I mean, if you tell me a guy's living in his car in the parking lot at Walmart, more power to him. But if he bought a house in Gray's Lake and he can't afford to pay for both of them, you know what? I don't feel sorry. That's not our job. I know, but, but I like to But that's so, the, the, person, the person that has submitted all the proper paperwork is not in that situation. The one that I have the paperwork is not in that situation. They are living where they're living. They're still living in their town home. They're, they're claiming hardship for several reasons. One is also that they've outgrown the space, but what the appraisal value is and what the, the market value is versus what their current mortgage is doesn't all pan out. Although I understand your position, Gary, uh, you know, if he does if he does go live someplace else and it's a nicer house, our powers are set out and yeah, we're in the covenants. But we do have the power to whether or not to grant them a hardship rental. And I see where Gary, what Gary's saying is, you know, hey, you knew your house was on the market for six months and you knew you couldn't sell your house. So now that you went ahead and for some people found another mortgage company to lend you money to buy another well, house. Well, why are we assuming not... that somebody bought something? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, so even if they didn't, let's say, okay. let's say, you know what? Uh, yeah, we'll grant any hardship case you want under, under when you're under your fifteen percent. No, but we would have to. We, we don't have that option. We don't. We don't, we don't have that why, but why should we even consider it? Because it's their covenant. covenant. They're already over. Why should we? Because grant? then it says in the covenant it falls to the village board that they well, have to come to a board. I think that's why they have to come, come to us to exceed. That's why we need the process that Linda is talking about. I got, a I got a different suggestion. Okay, wait, hold on a second. I think Chris Larson wants to say something. Chris, did you want the mic or you just want to read something? <laughs> well, he's reading okay. something. Okay. Why don't we just send it back to the association to tell them solve it? We can't yeah. because it's in their covenant. Oh. That we have <laughs> to no, actually, you could. Yeah, they could because change what, change. what you can tell them is that you're not going to authorize any hardships. But as long as you're over here, because, because you've already exceeded it and you're at 27%. But again, remember, I, mean, did, I think that the point was made earlier, and I think it's just something to keep in mind. You've got another association in town that has no restriction, no restriction on the number of rental units. You have no idea. You have no idea. They may be ninety-eight percent. And if if you take a hard stand on this, you just have to understand what that may be. Is more foreclosures and more vacant units. And well, it's just you know, to keep in mind. I, my concern is about you know uh, a couple parties that have come to us. One in particular that I currently have all the documentation for that is in a situation they're trying to do everything they're supposed to do. So are we going to punish them because their board hasn't done their due diligence and their job the way they should and say, you know, we're going to ignore your situation? I don't know that that's the right thing to do. I, I, have, I, I have a problem with that. I think that they would make their board go back to, to, the, to the board and say, you know what, we got to do something. Yeah, but really, all this says. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I don't want to see anything empty either. Yeah, but really, all this, you know, all this says that, and, and we don't have any legal obligation. No, it's not so much that I want to see anything empty. I don't want to see a person that maybe has a chance for a way out for us to say, "Screw you! You're not going to get your way out." That's because true. because if they're going to have to wait for this board to go through the steps to change their covenant or any other options, it's not going to happen fast enough to address their issue. It may address somebody else six months from now, but they're probably going to end up in full foreclosure. That's not my school. Go ahead, John. Yeah. No, well, what we're saying is, is we're kind of going off this email with these percentages, and like Gary pointed out before, you know, 10% of these or, or even 20% of these could be that a bank, a, a bank owns it and that's all they're going off of. They're not going off of Let me this reiterate right something I said earlier. I have asked for that detail. They should already have that detail. 
That is one of the reasons why I want Jim Rock to call and talk to their attorney tomorrow. Because I have asked repeatedly the association to provide this. I think the association has been reluctant to spend money on their attorney, quite frankly. And I understand reasons, but this is a situation where they can't be, they need an attorney and they need an attorney now. And they need to understand the gravity of the situation and their responsibility here. And I think we need Jim Rock to call them and say, you need your management company or hire somebody else to provide this service and find out. Um, in fact, Georgian brought up a point, and I don't know if this is a requirement or not, that, but shouldn't their management company have a copy of the leases on files? Yes, sure. Yes. 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 Sure. 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 It was not my goal in it. I'm sorry, Georgia. Mm -hmm. I, can't see I feel that if somebody has followed all of the requirements to uh, ask for a hardship uh, exemption, that we should honor it. And the other ones who haven't even had their place on the market for six months have six months in which their association can get their act together, and and we don't have to act on anything that hasn't completed the whole process according to their covenants and only deal with those who have met all of the requirements and not anything else and, and, and so the people are going to have to realize that if they haven't put the house on the market at all they've got six months of sitting there and maybe the president will realize that he's got six months to get his his um, act together and, and the covenants amendment. I agree. If they met the covenants, the requirements in the covenant, we approve it. The hardship request. My goal is not to hurt anybody. Uh, I, that's not what I suggested. Yeah, but then we also send a message to their board and management company, get it fixed. You violated your own covenants. We don't want to be put in the position of being Right, we don't want monthly hearings for all these hardships on a regular monthly basis. Take care, take care of this issue as yes. well. I agree, I agree. Chris, did you want to say something? Dave, Chris? I, I do too. Okay. Yeah. Take uh, turns. <laughs> just having a glance at that, not being a lawyer myself, but being familiar with how this process works. Uh, the short version uh, for the village board is that all of the necessary documentation really should be prepared by the association's board presented to you for a final rubber stamp approval, not making you guys necessarily the hounds. That would be my interpretation of how I read that. <coughs> and um, I have asked for that. that. I have asked for that. Um, so in terms of what it seems like the village board's responsibility is, is to review everything that's prepared for them and say yay or nay without necessarily going into any detailed process of, well, you need to give us this, you need to give us this. Their board should be the ones responsible for collecting all the information that the appropriate time. And I'm saying we should be a part of it. <laughs> well, I, I, yes, unfortunately, now. Yes, unfortunately yes. and I think Jim will tell you the same thing, is that because it's written into their articles. I understand that. What I'm saying is looking ahead. We'll do what we need to do now. Right. But looking ahead, I don't want to be a part of it. I agree. Job. Well, that, and that's why I want you to talk about this. Right. And, and the process for them to change their declarations is a very painful one, I'll be honest with you. No. Okay, so you guys go back to, to the association board and you say, you know what, we're going to put this up, you know, everybody's going to vote, and, yet, and they're still at 15%, then what do you guys do? Um, in our case, we don't have well, that particular limitation. <laughs> 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 But, but, but under those particular circumstances, it's not like a simple majority or even just a standard 20% quorum vote that we would use for an election, but it really requires a super majority of, of property owners, and whether that be banks, remote owners, local owners, whatnot, have to submit either in person or via a sign sworn proxy their vote to approve said change, which makes it very, very difficult to make these changes occur. Yeah, um, they may have something in there that says 60% or 80%, whatever that is, I didn't you know. know. The number. But I yeah. do know that it's more than a simple majority vote, and it's not something that the board on its own can act on. It's no, it is definitely it a super yes, yes, you are right. They, they would have to send a certified letter to all the property owners. As Gary has pointed out, it's kind of funny that they're coming to us now 15% too late. 
or 15%. But we're not quite sure. Like, sure. That's for there, there, there's 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 some over. 20% of that could be foreclosures, and they're just. True. Yeah, and so we do, we also, so yeah. That's what I was trying to get to yeah. before. 20% yeah. yeah. of those baby foreclosures, and they're under their 15, they're under their 15%. And we can send it back to them and say, you know what, you're under your 15%. You can go well, I, I, I think they're pretty, although we don't know that this is the exact percentage, I think it's a very, very good guess that they are well under the 15% because they do not have as many babies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish to uh, emphasize and confirm what Chris just said, but I think uh, we were talking about um, notification and, and how many. They should have copies of the leases and how many people uh, and what percentage. Um, I don't know how many of you have been on a community association before or been involved in a community association except Georgian. And I, I lived in a town okay. but, but, uh, quite frankly, um, our board, uh, and, and I think it's a major problem as our management company because I, I think they're somehow wedded to this management company and I don't think they're doing a very good job. They haven't from the start since I've lived here five years already. Uh, they didn't always get copies of the leases or know that units were being leased. And, and unit owners would lease their units and wouldn't tell them and wouldn't go through the board procedures. So I think that's another issue. The board didn't have a handle on this. Um, and you can't, you, know, you can't say, well, okay, the board should they have all this information. Sure they should. But uh, it's hard to get sometimes. And they're trying to now. In fact, they're going through a new program with the management company where the management company is going to uh, have a dedicated person to track down and follow up with unit owners on leases and, and get copies before the units are occupied. Yeah, there's ways to do it because I know Cranberry Lake has a very strong system in place. And, and I mean, they didn't always have it, but they made an effort to really pursue it. And, and there's some software that I don't know if their management company has or, or they have. But I'm sure there's a way if they want yeah. to do it. But again, okay. our board has tried. Uh, we can't even get a quorum for annual elections. Uh, the board has served the last three years uh, without being able to get anybody new interested in taking on uh, the job of uh, managing the association and we're one member short right now I and mean, we're two members short a couple months ago so how is the communication now on from your association so between I, mean, between well, I mean as far as the association getting the word out to you of when meetings are or what the situation is i had to i had to force them to tell me when the next meeting was <laughs> i mean because i mean you know, it's one thing to say people aren't showing up or people don't even come to general elections, but, but how well are they informed and how much in advance that these things are going on? We currently have a newsletter uh, in our annual uh, election packet. We get uh, total years, meetings, meeting dates on the sheet. Uh, at one time, one summer, a couple of summers ago, I, I didn't know it was even being, being held. So I didn't think we got proper notification. And I keep track of all this stuff pretty closely. Mm -hmm. So, um, but again, through through a lot of emails and a lot of my questions at meetings, they come around on certain issues. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still bad. I mean, I'm one of the only people that show up at meetings mm -hmm. out of 158 units, and I, I don't know how many people I can have each unit. Well, you can you can look at our meetings and go, you know, let there be four thousand people. Well, sure. Eight, well, sure. Eight, <laughs> you got five <laughs> eight readers, so we know what the association board meetings. And it's, and it's just as hard to get you guys to do something as it is our board. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, hey, Jerry isn't the only one that can make some good remarks. <laughs> you know, I, I will tell you when I lived in my townhouse. My husband and I bought a townhouse in Northern Arlington Heights when we first married. We paid our association fees monthly. We both worked full time. We traveled. We didn't have kids yet, so mm -hmm. we had a social life <laughs> of sorts. <laughs> and, you know, I have to be honest, I didn't go to my association meetings. I, I, I think I went two to two the whole time I lived there. But that being said, I paid my fees on time monthly. I read my newsletter. And I know I got a proxy vote at least once, if not twice, you know, and I made sure that our vote went in. So, you know, if it's communicated properly. All right, so 
correct me if I'm wrong, I think the goal is 